Alright, so I know there's a lot of people who are new to PC gaming, and trust me, the beginning can be confusing to a lot of people, and if you got a PC for the first time or you're switching away from console, then you're most likely making a couple of mistakes that most new PC gamers do, so make sure you watch the video to the very end as you might learn something. What's up guys, Prada J here, and these are 5 mistakes new PC gamers make. Alright, now first things first, you gotta avoid using your controller. Now as most people know, you can use a controller for many PC games, especially the games that I highly recommend it, like Rocket League. But besides those type of games, you wanna avoid using your controller over your keyboard and mouse as it does put you at a disadvantage in many ways, but most importantly, reaction speed and accuracy. If you're coming from a console, you might think that you're pretty good or alright when you're versing other console players, but when you load up into a PC lobby for the first time and decide to use a controller, you're gonna know Notice that the pace is going to change faster with enemy players being able to hit shots on you quicker and more precise and that's because of the keyboard and mouse. Now I'm not trying to say that you can't get by with using a controller for most of your PC games because there's a couple of pro players that use controllers on PCs as well. But if you want to stand a better chance in your matches and be able to level the playing field, you want to put your controller to the side and start using your keyboard and mouse. But one thing that you do got to keep in mind is the fact that if it's your first time using a keyboard and mouse in a game, you're most likely going to be trash. But but that's okay, as everyone has to start from somewhere. Not to mention the fact that if you're coming from a console, you're moving from a controller that has about 20 inputs to a keyboard and mouse that has about 80 to 100 inputs that you can use. But after you get used to the controls over time, you're not going to regret putting away that controller. Which speaking of controls, for the second mistake that many new PC gamers make is not utilizing keybinds. And honestly, I'm quite surprised at the amount of people that don't change your keybinds because this one mistake alone can easily make the difference between a good player and a bad player. Similar to how you can change your button layout on a controller, you can change your inputs for both your keyboard and mouse. Now, yes, most games have similar default keybinds like WASD for moving, SHIFT for sprinting, R for reloading, and etc. But you do gotta keep in note that not every game is gonna have the same keybinds. So depending on the game that you're playing, you're gonna have to learn the controls for it, which is common sense. But most importantly, you wanna figure out which keybinds you want to change so it's easier to play that game. For example, suppose you're playing Fortnite and you wanna build faster. Well, it would make sense to change your building keybinds to hotkeys around where your hand is normally at or even keybind your building controls to the buttons on the side of your mouse. Now that's just one example of using keybinds in a game, which is why you want to figure out what's the best keybinds for you depending on whatever game you play. Now yes, you could look up some videos on what's the best keybinds you could use or even look up your favorite streamer or pro player's keybinds, but you gotta keep in mind that just because those pro players are amazing with their keybinds doesn't mean that you're gonna do good with them. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't consider watching some keybinding games guide videos as some are pretty useful, but just know that you shouldn't expect immediate results as it does take some time getting used to the controls. But overall, you want to customize your keybinds to whatever is comfortable and easily accessible to you. So it might be a good idea to drop into the training or firing range of your favorite game, mess around with the controls until they feel good to you, and then most importantly, memorize those keybinds so you don't have to look at them while playing. But suppose you're already comfortable with your keybinds. Well, the third mistake that new PC gamers make is not adjusting your display or graphics settings. Now, in terms of display settings, this is mostly going to refer to the people that have a 144Hz monitor or just anything above 60Hz, which some of you may already know this or even experienced it, but when you get a high refresh rate monitor, you have to set the refresh rate in your display settings for Windows, because 9 times out of 10, the refresh rate is going to be at 60Hz by default. So you want to make sure you go into your display settings, change your refresh rate to the highest one available, and for the love of God, make sure you hit a apply, because I'm sure we all know someone that spent a lot of money on a monitor to only not use it to its full potential. But now, let's talk about graphics settings in games. If you're coming from console, you might get overwhelmed with the amount of graphics settings that you can change, like ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, chromatic aberration, and way more. Not to mention that you should disable vSync for more FPS. But the main thing that every new PC gamer should know is that if you have a rather low powered computer, you may want to lower your graphics settings so your games can run smoother, or if you have a beast of a gaming PC, you may want to turn them up so your game looks as best as possible if it doesn't affect your FPS that much. But if you want to learn more about settings and learn what each setting does so you can get better performance at your game, I'll be sure to link some videos for you guys down below. And now moving on to mistake number 4, which is probably one of the most common mistakes new PC gamers make, is overpaying for games. Unlike console, you can get many games for pretty cheap on PC, and in some cases for free. The first way is notorious Steam sales, but those are kind of rare, usually occurring during the summer, winter, and Black Friday. But the second way which is my preferred method is buying games from key sites. 
which if you don't know what they are, they are basically websites where you can purchase PC games for cheap as close to 95% off depending on the game. And this is usually the most recommended method of getting games cheap because instead of waiting for one of the Steam sales to happen, the discounts on these key sites are available pretty much all the time. And just a quick side note, they are not just limited to Steam games, they also sell games for different platforms like Origin, Uplay, and etc. And there's a good variety of these sites like G2A, Green Man Gaming, Humble Bundle, and way more. Which I'll be sure to link a couple of sites down below so you can check them out because everyone loves to save money. Now in terms of free games, of course, you could browse through some of the mainstream free to play games available on Steam, but you should really consider downloading the Epic Games Launcher if you haven't done so already. Because every once a week or so, they release some games for free. Which some games that I've gotten are GTA 5 Premium Edition, Watch Dogs 2, Subnautica, Hitman, and way more. Now although they may not release AAA games all the time for free, it's still a good idea to get the launcher and to just claim all the free games that do come out because in the end, it's still a free game that you can add to your library and maybe play on a rainy day when you got nothing else to play. But like I said before, if you take advantage of sales, key sites, and just free games available, you're gonna save a good amount of money that you could use for something else. But with that said, for the fifth mistake that new PC gamers make is just not practicing. If you recall to the beginning of the video, I talk about how using keyboard and mouse for the first time can be quite confusing but just take some time getting used to. But if you really want to get good at using keyboard and mouse, you gotta practice, which there's multiple different ways of doing so. First way is to try out some aiming simulators like AimLab which is free on Steam. This is one of the most popular aiming simulators that you can try as there's different modes and you can change settings to help improve your aim, which I would recommend spending at least 10 minutes every day doing this if you want to improve your mouse control. Though you could do the same thing in firing range or training mode of whatever game you play. Another thing that you could do if you're still feeling uncomfortable with your keyboard is to actually try practicing typing. Now yes, this may sound kind of weird, but practicing typing on your keyboard can actually really familiarize your hands on your keyboard so you're not looking at your hands ever while playing. Plus, it'll be easier to hit your keybinds. Now the average person types about 40 words per minute, so if you go into a typing game and get less than that, then that means that you gotta improve your speed. Which for me, I normally type an average of 60 to 70 words per minute which I think is pretty alright for me personally, but some of my friends can type an average of over 100 words per minute which is pretty insane to me. But overall, if you practice typing and longer practicing your aim and such through aiming simulators and just playing training or casual mode in PC games, you're definitely gonna improve with using keyboard and mouse over time. And I'll be sure to link some sites to practice typing as well like 10 fast fingers or type racer and such. But after going over all that, that'll be the end of the 5 mistakes new PC gamers make. And trust me, I'm sure many of us has made plenty of mistakes when it comes to PC gaming that I haven't even mentioned. But if you just got a PC for the first time and you're struggling in matches, don't worry because everyone has to start from somewhere. And if you guys got any tips for new PC gamers yourselves, be sure to leave a comment down below as I'm sure we can all help each other out. But I think that's gonna wrap it up and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, drop a like and subscribe for more quality content like this because I do love making videos like this one. Also, if you guys can, come join my Discord and link down below as I do want to grow my community in there and we're currently at over 1,000 members in there. So if you're interested in joining, the link will be down below. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and be sure to have notifications on so you won't miss any of my videos. My name's Prada J and as always, stay classy.